Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Aliens and Angels podcast. Um, Robert Khalil is my guest for today, but I'm still waiting for him to show up. So while I'm waiting, while we're waiting, I'm just going to uh, read a brief introduction for him. So today, I'm very excited to bring back my special guest, Robert Khalil of the Typical Skeptic podcast. Robert was inspired by the greatest of all time, Art Bell, and started his podcast in 2017 to share interesting perspectives on all things paranormal. Today, we're going to talk about Robert's research into the Anunnaki and other paranormal and spiritual topics. All of the links are featured below in the description and you can check me out subscribe to my channels leave me a comment like my videos and please do share my content with your friends you can now join my channel on youtube and take advantage of my perks i'm just making sure i got my microphone plugged in and so without further ado i'm going to bring him on robert khalil robert welcome to mm -hmm. aliens and angels so glad you could make it Oh, hey, Karen. Good to see you. You know, um, how's everything going? Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks. You know, I was just figuring it out because I have my 200th episode of my other show, The Quantum Guide Show, coming up in January. And, you know, I've known you now for five years because you were one of the first guests I had on and you were one of the first people who invited me on your show as a guest. And back then our channels were really tiny. I know, right? It's crazy. It's a, it's a, it's a, I didn't think it was going that long. Has it been that long? Has it been that long? Really? Like, wow. Yeah, two th in the, in the um, autumn of 2019. Wow. See, I thought I started in 2020. Like, I, because I thought I, maybe I was doing it before that, though. Like, I guess I oh, was. No. Yeah. Like, it might have been, it might have been 2020. It might have been the beginning of 2020. I'm not sure. But it, either way, it's been at least four full years now so it's been we've been doing this for a while um robert can you just check to make sure your noise cancellation is turned off uh yeah yeah how do i check that let me let me let me see on settings okay yeah let me check that real quick and because i thought i heard a bit of an echo i can put in headphones oh, yeah i have echo cancellation checked yeah but i can put in okay. headphones it helps no, I, we might be okay. I don't know. Maybe I just sometimes, you know, I'm new to StreamYard, so I don't always do it right. But I thought I heard a bit of an echo. And um, I know I have my noise cancellation on and I have my headphones, so we should be good. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here, you know. So uh, uh, what, what episode is this of your regular show of the Aliens and Angels? Oh, I don't know, because I don't do it in episodes. I do it in date. But I would say I've been doing this now for at least two years. Wow. That's yeah, amazing. so I did it in, I did it in uh, uh, 2023. And then in 2024, I started being more regular. Before that, it was a little bit hit and miss. Um, and uh, I, think I think a lot of people like get trying to get into podcasting and they think there's going to be a lot of money in it. And they, there's, there's not, no. it's, that's what it is. Like, it's like, a, a, you know, it's like, and then I think some people drop off. So I think for us to have stayed the course this long, you know, that's a testament to our, uh, our will and uh, our determination to do this and get the information and get the truth out, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you have to be in it because you believe in your message and believe in your content and you want to share it with other people. Like, for instance, when I got started uh, having what I'm going to 
to call my awakening process and started having contact with spiritual guides and stuff like that, there was not much out there. There was a leak project with Rex Bear had just started and Chris Matthew with Forbidden Knowledge News had just started. That was before you started, before I started. And But besides that, there was not a lot of content. So as I went through my awakening process, I sort of went, you know what, when I'm when I'm able, when I'm well enough, I want to start a podcast and then I want to have the content that I wish I had had back when I was going through the awakening process. And I know for you, it's because your mentor is Art Bell and you just got so much out of his programming that you wanted to offer uh, something to, to the viewers and the listeners as well. Well, I, I was kind of like you too. Like I, I listened to Art Bell back when I was a kid, like in like 2001, you know, because I was always into like, air, like our, you know, UFOs and the paranormal. And I was always wondering about the mysteries of life. And then, and then like my dad died at a young age, which was like, you know, that was like, I always tell people that was my first conspiracy. I mean, because, because uh, my dad was in Vietnam and he, uh, he was, they sprayed Agent Orange over there. So like, you know, mm -hmm. in 2001, I found out real quick that my dad probably died from cancer that was caused by the spraying of Agent Orange um, in Vietnam. And then when you look into what Agent Orange was, you know, there's a whole thing behind that. But then it goes yeah. even deeper with the whole Vietnam thing. Like the Vietnam thing is like, so to, some people say there were like mantids and like huge spider creatures in Vietnam. And there was a lot of like covert black ops operations going on there too. I can't prove that, but that's just stuff, stuff that people have said when they come on my show. But Anyway, like I was saying, um, so I listened to Art Bell, and then I was like you. I listened to I, – I always say, like, when I have Chris Matthew on my show, I always tell him, I was like – I always say, dude, your show was such an influence to me because I used to watch Forbidden Knowledge News, and I used to watch Leak Project with Rex, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. I was really I was really in fond of Gerald Clark. You know, I, I used to love when Rex would have Gerald Clark on because Gerald would come on and talk about the Anunnaki and stuff, and then – um, yeah, and then I, and that kind of inspired me to do my own show, and here we are today, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, um, another thing uh, not very many people know is that I had, uh, well, everybody pretty much knows I had uh, an angelic encounter and I had ET contact, but what they don't know is I've been working for the last three and a half years on my book, and I finally got it finished, Robert. So, um, um, Preston Dennett is going to um, basically coach me so that I know how to get it um, published. I'm going to publish it on Amazon, so I'm hoping to have it published soon. I'm to the point now where I'm going to send him my good copy, and he's going to go through it and just do a final edit for me and make suggestions. And um, well, I don't know if he's going to edit it. It's pretty much edited already, but he's going to make some suggestions and. Uh, and then I'm hoping he's going to write me a review. So um, I, I'm really excited that my book is coming out finally. Yeah. I'm First of all, congratulations. That's amazing, Karen. And like, you know, you deserve it for all the hard work you put in, you know, and, and not just that, but like, you know, you have these experiences and you want to get them out to show people what's really going on, you know, from your, from yeah. your perspective, I don't know if there's multiple things going on from multiple perspectives, but it's good to have people who are having the benevolent encounters of these, these beings that teach people things, you know, and yeah. that's fascinating yeah. to me. Yeah, I would say that the messages I'm sharing in my book are as important, if not more important than the actual experience. So, um, but I'm really excited that I finally got it done. It's been a long process. Um, um, it's a lot harder to write a book than you think, you know, especially if you're trying to keep it accurate and make it so that it's going to be enjoyable for the readers. But anyway, uh, enough about me. I was wondering what you want to talk about tonight. I was hoping we could get a little bit into uh, your research on the Anunnaki, and then we can also talk about anything you want. Rob. Yeah, I, I can go anywhere, you know, I, I, I uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's been a while since I talked about the Anunnaki, but I mean, um, I love talking about it. It's very interesting, you know, it's, um, it's, it was, well, it was like, that was my awakening um, point into this whole thing. That was like, you know, like, I, so like, you know, like I told you, like, I listened to Art Bell when I was a kid, right? And I was like, always mm -hmm. into mysteries of life and stuff like that. But then I had a reawakening in 2015. Um, I was on the internet and I was like researching um, 
just like ancient history stuff because I always liked ancient history. I was I was uh, always fascinated by it, and I was I think I was looking up a, a video about Alexander the Great or something, and then on on like this, you know, how you get recommendations for videos. Well, like a video came up as a recommendation, and it was uh, the Battle of the Eagle and the Serpent by Matthew Lacroix, where you know, and mm -hmm. I started watching it. And I was like. I was amazed. I was like, what is this? You know? And, you know, for people that don't know that the Eagle is, was Anki and supposedly in the serpent, or wait, no, the serpent was Anki and the Eagle was Enlil, you know? And yeah. in this video, Matthew goes into detail about how like these two brothers from the Anunnaki like warred over, over, over humanity over time. And then it like, it, it went on through their siblings and, you know, and I feel like a lot of people, you know, some people just say, you know, well, that was all Zachariah Sitchin. I'm like, well, it's not just Zachariah Sitchin. It's like mm -hmm. it goes way deeper than that. There were Assyriologists and researchers who um, transcribed the cuneiform tablets. And people don't know cuneiform tablets, the Sumerians baked tablets and clay, and they would inscribe everything on it. And they, they put everything down. They put their legal systems. They put uh, marriages, weddings, uh, uh Oh, they, they, they documented everything and they would bake it onto these clay tablets. And now we call them cuneiform tablets. That was how the, the Sumerians um, documented their society. And in mm -hmm. these in these tablets, besides all their legal jargon and everything else they recorded, there were stories about these beings that came and they were they called them the Anunnaki. And, you know, I don't really have a fixed purpose on where they came from. I don't know if they came from outer space or if they're from inner earth or you know, or mm -hmm. if they're interdimensional, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of open to that, you know, because I know a lot of people have a lot of different theories, but a lot of stuff points to that they could be extraterrestrial, you know, and uh, I just find mm -hmm. the whole thing fascinating. You know, I really do. I think it's really fascinating. It really is. And, you know, you can still see the serpent and the eagle in a many, many different flags, different political systems from the United States to you name it, we see the symbology that was introduced then still all over our earth. And it makes me wonder if they're not still in control. I, I think so. You know, I think so. They, they would be like behind the scenes. A lot of people say that yeah. there's like reptilians in control too and stuff like that. But I mean, it, it seems like they they might be you know or but um you know I, I don't I don't know a lot of a lot of people have like encounters with what they call our Nordic aliens and I've always wondered mm -hmm. if maybe those Nordic aliens were like some like an offshoot of the Anunnaki or something like that and then I've wondered if that I mean I don't know what what other people say but I've always wondered like what the Greys were too like if the Greys were like the androids for the Anunnaki or something like that or if they were you know it's 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 it's, it's all really interesting and there's so many different theories right so one thing i yeah. try to do is i try to stay open-minded to everything like i try not to mm -hmm. have one theory because there's so much information you know so uh i try to be open to it all but i don't really you know yeah i, I guess you know yeah, yeah i i agree i agree like we have a lot of guests on our shows you have a lot more shows than i have but um you know and everyone has their own perspective and they're all speaking from their own experience. And I think that a lot of this information, we filter through our own understanding and in our own frame of reference. And I think it's good not to fight over who's right and who's wrong, but accept that everybody's coming from a good place. Everybody wants to share what they know. And I don't think we have to settle on concrete truths with a capital T. I mean, my uh, my my um, contact experiences are weird as weird can be. I don't expect anybody to believe me because um, there's not that many people having the same uh, similar experiences on myself. I would say the closest would be Elsa Dillon. She has all kinds of interdimensional and transdimensional experiences. I classify my experience also uh, experiences also as transdimensional. You know, I've never had a spaceship come and pick me up and beam me up and have Grays take me off. I've never had that experience, but that doesn't mean that it isn't happening for other people. And there's a lot of people that I've gotten to know. I, I've gotten to know Elsa Dillon, Dolly Saffron, Preston Dennett, um, Jeff um, Selver, um, Jimmy Blanchett. There are so many people that have had different kinds of experience, contact experiences, and they're they're not 
weird people. They're not stupid. They're intelligent. They're honest. They're lovely people. Oh, and then there's also um, uh, Philip and Ronald Kinsella. Like all these people that I've met that have all had experiences. <clears throat> so there's something. There's definitely something, Robert. I may not be able to put my finger on it or say absolutely what it is, but there's definitely something. And then that also encouraged me to keep going with the second show, which is more geared towards aliens and angels and those kind of paranormal experiences, because I believe we're going to be exposed to a lot more contact. I don't think we're going to wait for government disclosure. I think we're going to have contact direct as we're ready to receive it. And so I wanted my show to be established so that people would have a place to come. Well, besides your show and, you know, and Rex's show and probably Chris's show and uh, some other shows. But I'm just saying I wanted to offer um, platform for people who want who are eager to find out more. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, that's one thing I tell, I tell people, like, you know, I, when going back to, like, podcasts and stuff, like, it's like, you know, like some people get mad when another guest goes on another show. And I always tell people, I'm like, you know, like those guests have to do multiple shows because a lot of guests are trying to sell books, you know, and when yeah. someone wants to sell books, they have to do multiple podcasts. So it's like a podcast circuit. It's like there can't just be one podcast. You know what I mean? I mean, that would that would be like really, you know, boring, you know. So I, I think it's great that all these different people have shows and stuff. And I try to help as many people as I can, you know. I, I really do because yeah. I know how hard it was when I was starting and um, you know, um and, and, and like you said, people want guidance as well, you know, and uh I think that's what we're 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 kind of doing, you know. Hmm. I, yeah. Yeah, because like I said, um, I, I got to say, since 2020, a lot of people have woken up and been completely shocked by the so-called truth of the medical industry. And then the government's behind that. And now, over the last year, we're really seeing how we can't trust mainstream media. And so people are going, where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? And, um, you know, obviously, podcasts, we are the new media. We are the the um, the truth bearers, the light bringers as much as possible you know so that people can come and and they I, like i don't expect people to just stick to my show i want them to go and see your show and see chris's show and see other shows they get a different take or different a little bit different perspective from each one um they get to see all kinds of guests your show has just got so how, how many shows a week do you do rob you do what? I mean, I, just to give an idea i have i, I have uh I have three after to the after I do this one. I have one at four, five o'clock, seven o'clock, and nine o'clock. Then I did three yesterday. Then I did four the day before that. Then I did three. So I've done probably, you know, twelve to fifteen shows just this week. You know, because I do it full time. You know what I mean? And like I, the yeah. way I look at it is like for me, full time is like I just like to be busy. I, I know it's probably mm -hmm. a little bit insane as how many shows I do, and it's probably it's probably a lot. But like for me, it it, it kind of helps me because like. I just like to stay busy, you know, and I like to be working and then, but I do, I tell people some days I, I wake up and like, I'll start working at like 11 o'clock and I'm not done until like 2 AM. You know what I mean? And I, yeah. I what's cool about it is I'm my own boss, so I can do whatever I want. If I want to go have a smoke or if I want to, you know, do this or that, like that's, what's great about it. I can take a break, but um, it's just a lot of work. And then there's sometimes where I get over bogged and I, I'll get like, uh, like burnout. And I like, I won't answer emails or DMS for like a couple of days. And then I feel bad because I, I'm, it's not like I'm like trying to like be mean to anybody. It's just like, you know, I probably yeah. take on too much work a little bit, but uh I know I've done like over 1600 shows now at this point. It's like 16. Um, unbelievable. Here I am talking about coming up to my 200th episode and you've done 1600. But I, uh, but you know what? You're doing what you love and you're doing what you want to do. And like you said, you like to keep busy, but it's also of real value to all the viewers and listeners. And you never know whose life you're going to touch and you bring a validity to people's paranormal experiences so they can, you know, if they're in the secret space program, they can find other people and connect with them that are also involved. There are people that are psychics so there. I mean, there's just no end to the paranormal, the, par, the paranormal realms. There's just no end to it. 
Um, and um, Mandela, Mayo. Hi, Mandela. Nice to see you. And also, yeah, the know, intro. Lately, I've been getting like a little bit out on the fringe, you know, with some of the stuff I've been covering. And like, I've been covering a lot of like what you said, like uh, secret space program experiences, people who feel like they've been abducted by the military or my labs, military abductions. And then also um, there's targeting that comes along with that. So people who feel like they've been in, they're exposed to these like black ops programs, they feel like sometimes that they're a targeted individual, you know, or there's yeah. just people who are targeted individuals who don't feel like they've been involved in these programs. And like what I, what I found fat, what I find fascinating about that is like, if it's really going on, you know, then that's an enormous problem, you know, because what, is. Is, what, what gives, what gives the government the right to, you know, or wh whoever this is, whether it's the government or a breakaway civilization or some, you know, deep, dark aspect of the military that people that will never meet, like what gives them the right to invade someone's home in the middle of the night and take them out of their home and, and, and do experiments on them or um, expose them to secret space programs and cloning and all that stuff. And, or someone who's just claims to be a targeted individual where the government might be, you know, exposing them to like frequency weapons or, and I say government, I, it could, it could, like I said, it could be a breakaway civilization or, it, you know, but I, one, one thing I do think is I feel like some of these people are having real experiences, you know, and I don't discount them because, you know, it's like a lot more people are coming out with this stuff. So it, it, may, yeah. it makes me think there's something to it, you know? Well, I think there is too. And the research I've done, there is a hidden agenda and there is uh, what I call the construct, which is a false reality, which includes the political systems, the religious systems, the socioeconomic systems, the industrial military con co uh, complex, and it's huge. And it's behind the scenes. And they've had relative control over humanity for a long time. And then what's happened, especially in the last, well, I would say since Roswell, what's happened is technology has taken a huge leap. And these, I don't know, people or beings or combination thereof are using us for experimentation. And you're right, it might not be any particular government, but you know, there's a lot of money funneled into NASA. We don't see where that money goes. There's a lot of black uh, operations that we don't know anything about. I mean, the presidents don't even know anything about it. Hopefully that's gonna change. And they've been experimenting on humans for a long time. So just take a look, let's circle back to your dad in Vietnam and the Agent Orange. What right did they have to do that to other human beings? And we all know that uh, that war was nothing to do with what we were told it was about. And um, and so I believe that people are being um, targeted, absolutely. And they are, like, I think a lot of the negative extraterrestrial experiences are actually human-initiated and uh, and uh, pulled off by humans that are again they just can't seem to stop um doing cruel experiments on humans and, and you know it isn't just humans rob they're doing like um it just recently came out that anthony fauci is funding millions of dollars into all these super cruel animal experiments that have no purpose what would be the reason why they would be doing all this? Really, I think it serves as entertainment for the hidden class of people that that uh, have all the power and all the money and all the everything. And I, I don't know, it's sick and it's got to change. That's all I know. It's got to change. Yeah, but I feel like that's why we're, like it's important like to have shows like yours and mine because like we can like wake people up to these things because a lot of people are new like a lot newer than we you know like like so like, so I had my awakening in 2015 even though I had like been into the paranormal and stuff a long time I just like I wasn't aware of these bigger truths and when I hmm. became aware of these bigger truths it really changes your life and you can't really go back to living a normal life you know once you know hmm. what's going on in the world it's hard to like you know live a normal life again and uh you know, I have friends that I grew up with that they 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 don't believe any of the stuff that I believe, and I'm like, man, you got to really open your eyes. Like, there's a, a lot of horrible stuff going on in the world, you know. And we we have to be beacons of change. We have to try to change 
the world so we it's a better place so because i i feel like whatever created us like god's source or you know whatever you want to call that being or that energy if it's an energy you know i felt like it it it, it put us on this planet to be creator beings and be be be, be and, and caretakers for the earth and then you know so like we, it's like our job to like um make this place a better place and and the people that are in control are definitely not doing that they're just they're like they're making it it's like this place is like a it's like a prison planet yeah. it's like an insane asylum and you know like i don't know you know what i mean it's uh it's like it, it's if i didn't explain it it's what i feel like sometimes i feel like this place is one big like prison planet it is. insane asylum you know and then when it the is full, of course is the full moon comes and people start acting complete it's been like it's been nuts over the past few weeks because we've had a couple super full moons and people are just acting bizarre you know mm -hmm. um is the, their behavior is on full display. So sometimes when the full moon comes, I just want to shut my door and like stay inside because like, I don't know what it is, but for some reason people tend to act like really off, you know? I don't know. Do you get that too with people? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I have to laugh. Medela Miles says, my aliens were nice. I didn't get probed or anything. Yeah, my, my experiences with them were very positive too. But I wanted to get back <clears throat> to this whole thing of awakening. And this is just my opinion, Robert, you don't have to agree with me. But I feel like something happens and it shocks us and we become awakened and i find that the awakening process actually hit me in layers as i was able to cope with it because it is very uncomfortable it's very um upsetting it's disturbing to see what's going on and no wonder so many people don't want to wake up because they're content it's kind of like the matrix they're happy to be in the matrix and they just care about having a beer on saturday night in the football game or or the latest fashion or hairdo or whatever and and because it's it's uncomfortable it's painful you have to be very brave to go through the awakening process but i think that that has to happen before we're ready for what I call the ascension process. And the way I see the ascension process is where we start to have paranormal experiences. We start to realize who we are, why we're here, our connection with source or universal consciousness. And then we start to slide into our higher purpose. But we can't do that unless we first do that horrible, uncomfortable awakening process. What's your thoughts, Rob? I mean, yeah, it is. It's it is uncomfortable, but you know, I I don't I don't know. I, I'm I, I don't I'm not sure if we have a you know. I, it seems like there's an ascension process. Yeah, like I don't know who's in charge of that though. You know, or when it's going to happen, or like you know, I'm not, I'm not like filled in on the whole details of that. But I mean, you know, um, one thing I can say is it seems like it's an expansion of consciousness. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's what I would call it. Is uh, is like. Because when, when people start to wake up to bigger truths, it expands their mind and it expands their way of thinking. And usually people become a little bit more benevolent, you know, because they realize some of the things they've been doing in their life and the way they've been acting. So, I, I yeah, yeah. And then I would also say that the veil's thinning, too. It seems like people mm -hmm. are having more paranormal experiences of all kinds. People are seeing UFOs and interdimensional beings like you have transdimensional beings. Um cryptids is a big thing that's happening now yeah. too a lot of people are seeing all different kinds of cryptids um you know uh shadow people uh it seems like yes yeah, it's, it's and it seems like it's happening more and more now there's like an uptick of it so yeah yes, I, don't, I, I don't know you know i agree i agree no when i said ascension i don't see ascension as being the same thing as the rapture a lot of people think ascension means the rapture i don't mean it that way i mean us being open to universal consciousness and the gifts that i think are our god-given gifts to have interdimensional and transdimensional experiences i just want to take a minute to welcome angel wing she just became a youtube member on my channel and she also uh sent her love and her greetings to you rob so i know you're friends with angel wings yeah it's jamie, jamie, shout out. She's, a good, she's a good friend she i like jamie a lot she's a uh, she's really active in my chats on my channel and she's a uh, listen she, that's one person you definitely want on your team because uh I mean, she's an amazing person. She she always brings the highest vibe with her. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And she's always trying to change someone for the better. Like, and she, a lot of people don't know about Jamie. She has contact with real dragons and, uh, and, uh, and, and she has that like dragon energy. She, she, she honestly was what I feel like she was one of the first people that started bringing dragons and the, and the reality of dragons into the collective. Like now all these people are starting to talk about dragons and their, and, and, and the dragon energy, this and that. Well, Jamie was talking about that three years ago and she has yeah. pictures and uh, I've had people who say they were skeptical of Jamie's dragons. And then they, they saw the pictures that now they're these pictures that they're not like full blown dragons, but they're like, they're like in the shadows and stuff and you can tell something's there. So she's definitely in contact with something, you know, and the fact mm -hmm. that she stays so high vibe, like makes me think that she's having some, a very benevolent contact, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I'm, um, I'm really happy that Jamie pops into my show too. And thank you, Jamie, for becoming a member. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, so there again shows you the diversity in the paranormal. It's not just aliens. It's not just angels. It's not just psychic ability or intuitive knowing. Like Jamie, uh, she has contact with um, dragons. And a lot of people think dragons. Oh, isn't that from old English or Chinese mythology? Well, no, the concepts came from someplace. And um and, um, and, you know, there's all kinds of beings that are interdimensional. Um, I also believe that the fairies and the gnomes and those kind of creatures are also pop in and out of our reality. There's even some evidence, perhaps, that um, Bigfoot and other cryptids are able to sort of disappear and pop in and out. But then again, there's enough uh, evidence and enough accounts of people talking about how there's portals all over this planet. So like I said, there's so much that it, you got to step out of the mainstream reality to see all this stuff, but it's really super fascinating. Another funny, another uh, funny one, but uh, there's, is the, the little people too. I love I love getting into the little people phenomena and um, there's a, I mean I could just give you a couple examples of what I know so obviously everybody knows about leprechauns in Ireland right that, that's one that we've mm -hmm. all known about forever but then there's um, there's uh, in North Carolina there's something there's something called Cherokee little people and um, mm -hmm. Mary Joyce has written a book on this I've had her on my show a couple of times I found her on coast to coast uh, she was on coast to coast and then I invited her on my show and she's written books on Bigfoot and she wrote one on Cherokee little people. And then she's written also one called spy in the sky where she went all over like Google earth and Google. Um, yeah. On Google earth. And she like picked up She, I guess on Google earth, you're, you're also able to see the moon and you're able to see Mars. So what she did was interesting. She found like anomalies on Mars and on uh, the yes. moon and she documented them in her book spy in the sky. But then, what, but like getting back to what I said, the one that she was what really interested me was the Cherry, Cherokee little people, which are like supposedly they look like Cherokee people, but they're you know like three foot tall, and they found these caves in North Carolina. They're 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 like for the for the size of these little people, and they're burrowed through like they almost like they live underground. And then uh -huh. um, there's also lore in uh, up in the. Uh, New England area, which is um, you, which is the Bridgewater Triangle, which is like a really active paranormal place. It's uh, they have like everything there from like cryptids to uh, UFOs to uh, um, uh, you know, it's like a paranormal hotspot. Like all these places, like Skinwalker Ranch and the Alaska Triangle, and um, uh, uh, what's the one I'm thinking of? Uh, the Meadow that Trey Hudson talks about. Um, but anyway, so up in the Bridgewater Triangle, they have the lore of the Pukwudgie. And the Pukwudgie is supposedly a little being. It's like, you know, three foot tall, and uh, it interacts with humans. And it, it comes in and out of this realm. I'm sure maybe a lot of your your, your uh, people in your audience might know who the Pukwudgies are. And and I just find that fascinating that these little people are amongst us, you know. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, I, I, mean, I wonder where all these beings come from. And I would love to go to this world, you know, like. I wish I was I could go interdimensional and meet all these beings like fairies and elves and gnomes and little people and you know dragons and I mean I I would I I would like that would be a, that would be like a field day for me you know but like I don't have I can't I can't I can't 
and for whatever reason, I can't connect to anything like that. I've done DMT where I've, I've connected to something, but you know, that's a whole other story. Yeah, those are the machine elves, they say. Yeah. I, I, I believe that all the uh, fairy folk and the gnomes and the wee people and all of that, I believe they're interdimensional. And I've been told, I don't know if this is true, but I've been told that um, they actually help to repair the time-space continuum. They're actually wow. got a purpose and, 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 and they actually repair. You, you would think... You know, they, did, they don't look like they would be technical, but apparently they are highly technical and they repair the time-space continuum so that we can continue uh, in the simulation that we call our reality, which is another whole topic. Oh, my God, we can go everywhere. Well, yeah, I, I was going to tell, tell you. So I've had a couple like interesting experiences of a plant medicine, and I, I don't condone anybody using any kind of hallucinogens, but, I mean, I was do I. I did it for my spiritual awakening and I wanted to see if I could like, you know, access other dimensions and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I, I have a couple really interesting stories. One night I was, I took a couple shrooms and I was sitting here and nothing was really happening. And then I laid down and it, it felt like, you know, like, you know, those like, like escalators or conveyor belts. It felt like, like a conveyor belt full of energy started going up my back. And then I had my eyes closed because I decided to lay down and like, it see it look, I saw the serpents going up like the, the 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 way they talk about how the kundalini rises. That's I what saw, I was thinking when you were saying that. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing, you know. And then like the energy came out and it like went through my 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 chest and it went into my pineal gland and it, and it kind of exploded out of my you know like not in a, a violent way but like it was just like energy you know and uh and then and then I sat there and I said was that real. You know, and I said, I'm not sure if that was real or not, but I mean, I said it was really interesting. And then the only other really interesting experience I've had off of, uh, you know, plant medicine was uh, I, I took DMT one time and I didn't see a lot. I saw like a couple of things I thought I interacted with, but nothing I can really document. But then what was interesting was when I was when when the when the, when the, the plant medicine was wearing off, when the DMT was wearing off, I looked at my desk and everything looked holographic. Like everything, yes. it was almost like I was seeing like a the the whole the 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 blueprint of the matrix, if you want to call it that. You know, it was it was, and that's what made me start thinking. Like, you know, and then back in the day, like my, on Rex's shows, like Gerald Clark used to talk about this book called The Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot, which I still haven't read, but I heard it's amazing. You know, but I, I you know, it was stuff like that, and obviously, I've had Richard Allen Miller on my show too. He's amazing. He talks a lot about the holographic universe. So, and, well, and a lot of people do, you know, it's, 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 uh, I, I think that's a, it's, there's something to that, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, to I totally do because it's the only thing that really explains um, how I'm able to have so many trans dimensional uh, it, reality experiences and they're absolutely real. At first I thought I was dreaming and then I thought I was crazy. It took me a while to accept that this was a real thing. I just want to mention Stanton uh, Mick says, I think shrooms are great for accessing the bleeding of the realms, a good nature walk, different vibration, all kinds of beings come out. Those substances are there to help train us to observe later. You know, that's I think Dan, he, Dan Stanton Mick. He's a he's a he's a good friend of mine too. He's in he's in my Discord group, but he's also lately he's had a, he's had a really big role on Arkeem Raj show. Like he's we're, we're yeah. kind of like all friends. Like him and, and my friend Nathan Sizak and uh, Arkeem, they they've been doing a show lately. It's on uh, the Disclosure Now channel, and uh, Dan's a very intelligent guy. He's a I mean, well, you want to talk about someone who's just like brilliant like dan's like on another level he does a uh, tqh healing which is like a mm -hmm. different modality of healing and then he's also he also researches uh the pierre sabak stuff like the, the etymology and symbology stuff about like, yes. it goes into yes. ufology and it's very interesting uh yeah i you should have dan on your show honestly you you, you would love you would love him as a guest and i can, you know I what can, yeah. After after the show, I'm going to get you to send me his contact and I'm going to invite him to the show. I'm always looking for new people. Um, I just want to mention, I don't know if you can see this, but Woo Riders DG says, oh, my goodness, 
It's Rob Khalil. He is a superstar. So I just thought I wanted uh, to Jerry, put that Jerry in there. Galloway. I'm good friends with him too. He's a. Uh, oh, are you? Too. Yeah, he's in my, he's in my Discord group, and then he also uh, he's a he's a really good friend. We we he, he's 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 a, he's a, he's friends with all of us. He's friends with Dan and Jamie and me, and like yeah, we're oh, yeah, he's, awesome. He's an awesome guy. Yeah, he, Derek's I, also Derek, Derek and Dan are both moderators on my channel too. So wonderful. Yeah. And I think wonderful. Jamie is. Too. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Well, uh, some some weeks I don't get any comments at all and then other weeks are quite busy but on the busy ones I kind of do need moderators because it's not always easy for me to pay attention to absolutely everything everyone says and pay attention to my guest and do all the other stuff. Rob I'm wondering if you mind if we just take a very short break for a one minute promotion and then we'll come right back and pick up where we left off. Sure. Okay this will only be a minute. Hi guys break time for a short message. Are you looking for the perfect, unique seasonal gift? Check out Zendome's Organite. They are my unique brand of orgone generators, and they are affordable, ethically sourced, handmade, and double charged for maximum effect. They are only available through my website, KarenHoltonHealthCoach.com. These beautiful devices are simple compounds which balance ambient energy by converting negative energy and EMF into positive healing energy with many easily confirmed health benefits. They help diminish the harmful effects of negative energies and EMF by attracting and converting them, retuning them into new and more healthful sound and light wave patterns. They also produce orgone energy, which is also known as chi, prana, zero point and life force. And you can use these devices for focusing the mind, healing, meditation, and for spiritual growth. Zendome's Organite are my unique brand of orgone generators, and they are only available through my website. Don't be fooled by imitations. Check out my website to see my latest selection at KarenHoltonHealthCoach.com. That's K-A-R-E-N. H O L T O N healthcoach.com. Check them out today. Now, let's get back to the show. I got a question here for you. Uh, Woo Riders DG says, Question Rob, what do you want personally to see come from the phenomenon in the next 12 months? Good question. Can't hear you, Rob. Are you on my are I'm you muted. on mute? I'm good. Are. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, what I was saying is that's a that's a that's a tough question, but I, I talk about this a lot. What I'd like to see is um like full disclosure. And what I think full disclosure means is like, you know, they've had these UAP, UAP hearings lately, right? And like we're not getting anything from them. And they talk mostly talk about nuts and bolts stuff. I mean, I'm gonna have Stephen Bassett on my show tonight. He's gonna talk about it a little bit. So I'm excited to see what he has to say, but like, you know, like, I, you know, I, we, you and I interviewed like the contactees, you know, I, I do have people who say they've been abducted, but I also have people who say they have benevolent contact. I'd like to see that brought forward. And that, you know, so people see all different sides of the phenomena to like wake the normal people up that this is actually a real thing and, and all different kinds of contact, like the trans-dimensional contact, like you have the interdimensional contact, extraterrestrial, uh, inner earth, you know, and then also I'd like to see some disclosure as far as like um, what's going on with these programs that I talked about, like these when people are being targeted and taken yeah. by the military or and usually they're taken by the military because they have some kind of alien contact. Some some of my labs aren't, though. I mean, but most most of my military abductees have alien contact. So I'd like to see all that. And I feel like that would be full disclosure. You know, I'm not yeah. sure if the public ready for that, but I think that's what we need. You know. I think we're ready. I, I think we're ready. And, you know, um, uh, what I'm going to do with this show is uh, um, for the final uh, episode of 2024, I'm going to have a panel of experiencers on. And then next year, what I'm going to do is have a, um, uh, a preparing for contact convention. So I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but something along the line of prepare for contact con. 
And then what I'm going to do is have um, guests who are experiencers on the show, uh, talk to them about their experiences. And then I'm also going to have some panels where we're going to be able to take questions uh, from the viewers, from those that are in the, the live chat, answer their questions from our different perspectives, and also do some roundtable shows. So basically, it will be like a convention, but it'll be divided up week to week. And it might take me two months to get through everybody and to have different combinations of guests that can um, share their experiences. And it's kind of nice when you have different, what I love about it is we're all grown ups and we never fight over our experiences. We never think that ours is right and the other person's is wrong. No, there's room for everybody and for everybody's um, to share what they have experienced. And I think that is the best kind of disclosure um, there is, of course, it would be nice to find out what David Grush knows and, and you know, some of this other stuff. And I also want to throw out, and I would like your opinion, because I'm actually Canadian and you're American, Rob. What do you think could happen with the new uh, government in the United States that seems to want to rip the lid off everything and expose JFK and disclosure and where all the money is going and all that other stuff. So what's your opinion about all that? I was, I, I'm actually kind of excited about it. Like I, I was, uh, I'll call him Mr. T because if you say that name, it can trigger and I don't want to mess up your show. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So, thanks. So, yeah. So, uh, so I'll just tell you, so like, so what, okay. So I'm very anti-political like you, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't like politics at all. I hate it. I feel like it's yeah. divisive and it's like, you know, it's it's very a, a part of the system, and I'm very anti-establishment. You know, I feel like we should be free and sovereign, and we should elect our own leaders, and you know, like we should have choices, right? But like, a lot of people kind of got to me, and they said, you know, they they started telling me about Mr. T, and then my friend kind of drug me to a rally of, about of Mr. T, and when I went to this rally, like I noticed some things. I noticed that all the people there were just like you and me, Karen. They just wanted freedom. And they wanted a better mm. life. You know what I mean? They wanted like the old America that like we remembered growing up in, you know, that that's kind of, you know, and, and some of the policies that are, that I can't really talk about on this platform that mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's kind of going after. That's what people want. You know, they, they want to, they want a better life. You know, I'm not saying he's going to do that for sure. You know, I, I can't say that because I don't know him, you know, and like, and I, I don't have a very good trust in politicians. All I can do is hope, you know, because I feel like one big thing that came from it is like, well, okay, whether you like Mr. T, you don't like Mr. T, it seemed like a lot of people did. And it seemed like that freedom came through and, and it showed that we still have a voice and that our voice can be counted, you know, like, and, you know, is where the, it's not total corruption and total, you know, control over, you know, the way mm -hmm. they appoint people like in some countries, you know, but I mean, as far as like my personal opinion, I have hopes for it. I really do. I, I hope he does. And I like the fact that he appointed RFK because I, 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 I'd love to see, you know, fluoride taken out of the water and I'd love to see the air cleaned up and I'd love to see the poison taken out of the food. And, you know, and it seems like mm -hmm. RFK is going through all that. So when RFK joined up with Mr. T, I kind of got excited, you know. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, actually, me too, because things have gone to hell in a handbasket here in Canada. Our politicians are absolutely corrupt um, and um, all they do is take our money and our tax money and funnel it into uh, shady deals with their friends and they really don't care about us. And even though I'm Canadian and not American, watching what's been going on in the, in, in the United States, I felt that there was a huge disconnect between the politicians and the common people. There was like miles and miles and miles between which I didn't think there would be any reun reuniting. But now what I uh, see and from what I understand, and again, you know, like I said, I'm not American, but this is just my opinion anyway, and my take on it is there's a reconnection with the common people so that their health is being cared about, their money is being cared about, you know, all aspects of their life is now being taken into consideration where it wasn't before. And I'm excited, but I'm also scared because what's happened in the past to people like Gandhi and Martin Luther King, and John F. Kennedy, and, 
You know what I mean? I'm not going to yeah. get into it. I don't want my channel canceled, but I'm just saying, uh, I hope they're all taking precautions, big time precautions, because um, um, there are forces that want, who would want to put an end to this, absolutely, and push it back to the way it was. And and then yeah, I, I have an interesting story about that. So that that is that assassination attempt, the bit, the one that happened where they let the where they the, somehow Secret Service let the guy up on the roof and nobody noticed yeah. he was there. I'm like, yeah. how's that? Happen? You know, but that happened in a, a town that's like honestly like 30 minutes from like where I live. It's it's called Butler, wow. Pennsylvania. Yeah, and, I didn't know. Uh, that. And what was interesting was I wasn't even in Pittsburgh at the time. Like, I, I don't know if you know this. I went to a, my first big conference this summer. I, didn't, I don't know if I told you about this. Uh, I went to the Full Disclosure Now conference. It was thrown by Brian Singh. And uh, it, it was uh, a lot of, like, um, experiencers. There was a, a lot of it was, like, you know, secret space program people and, um, you know, um, uh, Montauk people, like people who said they've been in Montauk. And, like, also, but there also were, like, contactees there, like, Rian Daruin was there. Um, you know, he said he brings like a real positive vibe. I've had him on my show too. It was just like a big mix. And there was like a lot of psychics and healers. Like my friend, Matthew Morning was there. Um, there Laura Eisenhower was there. Um, you, you may, I mean, there was a lot of people there, you know, but, um, and, uh, I, I actually, I crowdfunded the whole trip, which was amazing. You know, my, my fans like really, you know, got my back and my fans like got me there. And so I owe everything Wonderful. to my fans. You know, and, and I had a blast when I was there. Like, all the people there were just, like, amazing. It was like meeting soul family. But, like, the day I left for Florida, I was going down to Florida. That happened, that assassination attempt. It was it was interesting, you know. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. And I was supposed to be it there. I was that, – that's if I wouldn't have went to Florida, I was going to go to that. But I didn't – I'm glad I didn't go because, you know. Uh, yeah. But w when I went to the one rally – I listen to this. So this is interesting, Karen. So I went to the one rally, and – um. I, uh, I, I, I was, uh, I was filming it with my phone and I was live streaming it to YouTube. And then, um, I started feeling like really sick. I started feeling like horrible, you know? And then when I left the rally, I came home and I, I was like, there's something wrong with me. And, uh, I, I got with my friend, my friend Priscilla message messaged me out of nowhere. She's like a healer. And she said, where were you? And I said, I was, at, I went to this political rally and I was like, she was like, why would you go to a political rally? You're not, you're not political. I was like, I know, I know. And she, she says, and I told her, I said, I think I got hit with a frequency weapon. So I don't think it was mm -hmm. anybody benevolent. I think what there were, I think there were negative agents in the, in the crowd, like beaming people with frequency weapons. Like, so there's a yeah. lot more spiritual warfare going on with these things than people realize, you know? Well, it's all connected. I believe it's all connected, uh, Robert, all of it. And I think that we are at a time now where we have a, a, a situation of good versus evil and people are coming out and they're showing their very best side or their very worst side. It's kind of going from one extreme to the other. I got this little light shining in from my curtain. I got my curtain closed. It doesn't matter how I move. They're still, hitting, they're still getting to me, which is kind of interesting in itself. So, um, but that's wonderful that you went to that conference. So one of my hopes is once my book takes off, um, uh, is that that'll uh, hopefully I'll get invited to some conferences and or be able to afford to go to some conferences because I too want to mingle with my uh, spiritual family. Uh, you know, I want to be around other people that. Because where I live, trust me, I live in Alberta and central Alberta in Canada. You cannot talk to people about this stuff, you know, which is another reason why I do my shows. Because then I get to meet like-minded people and uh, express myself and stuff like that. So I don't know, maybe next year I'll see you at one of the conferences. I'm all excited. Yeah, one thing that it was interesting though that you mentioned was um I so like I I I yeah I think that's so amazing that I've known you since uh 2020 and I just want to show people so like um so if you guys I mean we saw the commercial for it but guys this is a uh, Karen Karen gave me this and she sent it to me you know and uh and and it's pretty amazing and I have the other one here I just had it on my desk I moved it because I was doing something where'd it go. But I have the oh man I, I don't know what I did with it but anyway so Karen sent me these or uh, these orgone generators and it's amazing that she makes them and me and Karen have known each other since 2020 and I was gonna say Karen it's funny because in 2020 like 
I go back to some of my shows because what I've been doing lately is I've been posting like I call them back in time shows because I'm really trying to promote my audio podcast because I found out yes. that the monetization for audio is much better than video or it's it's at least very relatively comparable. And I think I think there's something there. I think people can make more money off audio than they can off yeah. video. It's good to yeah. have your stuff backed up on audio because you're also it makes you more available like you want to be on spotify and apple Podcasts because a lot of people sometimes go there for their music and then your podcast might show up and they might decide to listen to an episode so i just think it's good to be on those but anyway so um what i've been doing is i've been publishing these back i call them back in time episodes where i'll go back to 2021 or 2020 and i post them directly on my audio feed and i i listen to them myself sometimes and i was really green like I didn't know about hardly anything back then. And I, I admit it. Like, so my awakening journey has come very far. Like th I'm a complete different person than I was four years ago. You know, like yeah, I don't think I do much at all, you know, like, and, and now I know a lot more. So it's like, it's just interesting to see how things, you know, are, you know, I, I don't know. It's uh, and, and also your organ generators because these are amazing. I've had this and it. I keep it right by my my uh I keep it right by my modem, you know. Thank you, Karen. That was really nice of you oh, to do. You're you're welcome. I actually sent a few to Angel Wings, uh Jamie as well. And I, I send them I sent some to Chris Matthew, I sent some to uh uh Ryder Lee from uh Raised by Giants, and um I so I've sent them to quite a few of my friends, but uh, I still have a few left. I'd like to sell them uh soon uh that would be great but at the same time they'll go when they need to go it seems like there's a whole spiritual component that when people are ready and they get the urge to buy one then the time is right for them to get it oh angel wings bless your heart jamie says I, yes they are amazing so also, um I just, uh, I just wanted to tell you real quick there karen this is a good idea too so asics in the chat he's a good friend of mine too his name's isaac but he goes by asic on online and uh He's very metaphysical. He's very, very intelligent as well. But he, he mentioned in the chat, he said, I need a Substack. And I would recommend mm -hmm. that for you too, Karen, because Substack's becoming very lucrative. And what you can do with Substack is it's you can publish articles. You can write your own like short stories, articles. You can post videos. You can post pictures. It's like Patreon, but better. And a lot of people are doing it. A lot of people who are authors and stuff. We want to mm -hmm. get their content out there or doing, they'll have like a YouTube and then they'll have a sub stack or some people won't even have a YouTube and they're just deciding to go sub stack. Like I've been thinking about yeah. doing a sub stack for a while, but I just don't know if I would have the, con I mean, I'm sure like what I could do is something like where I could like, you know, do a podcast and then I could write up an article about the podcast, like for, for further investigation and put that on the sub stack. Cause someone told me, yeah. I think sub stack wants you to have like exclusive content. But I think that would be oh. great for people like me and you, like a sub stack, you know? Yeah. Like, well, as time permits, like I said, I've been feverishly working on getting my book finished. And now I've got another book I want to start that is kind of a workbook and presents all that information that I think I've told you on your show, The Quantum Health Transformation, which is a free online program that I share with everybody that helps them to get ready for contact and for uh, awakening and get through it, through it all. And so that's kept me really busy, then two shows a week. But everything I produce on uh, YouTube, and Rumble and Odyssey also goes to X, also goes to Telegram, and it goes out on the Forbidden <coughs> Knowledge Network, which I'm also a part of. So I'm also on all the audio platforms too. So that's quite a lot to keep me busy. Plus I try to get out for walks and take care of my health and occasionally get the dishes done. So, um, oh, here, <laughs> let me see. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. seriously. And look after my cats, and I have to keep them out of the room when I'm recording because um, they are just terrible. They'll be jumping all over my computer and jumping all over me, and then they need some time and attention because they're my furry babies. They anyway, probably get activated by the energy. Like if you have psychic people on your show, that psychic yeah. energy creates a ripple effect, and it and the cats probably get anxious. You know, like in a good way. I don't know. They get. Something like they that. Get, I don't know. They get just wild. They're not like that any other time. I just want to mention Angel Wings says, I carry with me the balancing wand all the time. Great protection as well. 
as uh, it helps me ground a different way as well. Thank you, Angel Wings. Yeah, I sent her uh, the balancing wand. So I, I don't just have pyramids. I have energy protection discs. I've got wands. I've got pendants. I've got butterflies. I recommend people take them in the bath with them to run a salty bath and take them in. And uh, it helps to restructure the water and is very grounding. So they can be used for all kinds of things. Anyway, if you guys are interested, check them out on my website and uh, um, see what I have left. And um, and thank you all for your kind words. I really appreciate it. So as far as Substack goes, there's two things I'd like to do in the uh, in the new year. One is look into Substack, but also I'd like to look into Patreon. I haven't got a Patreon yet. So that's something else uh, upcoming. But there's only so many hours in the day. And I got to tell you, uh, Rob, sometimes I spend way too much time on screen time. And it's just like yeah. my brain goes, I can't do this anymore. And I have to get out for a walk or I have to take a day off, too. So and I'm That's getting right. old, you know. I, I I'm 44. I'm not a spring chicken. I mean, I I, I you know I, I don't I don't know. I, I feel like time's going so fast. I don't like it. You know, like, you know, that's why I'm trying to get all my stuff in now, because, you know, I don't know, like. You never know what could happen. My dad died at 51. So yeah. I always say I feel like I'm going to die young. And I hope I don't die young. But, like, I want to leave a legacy. I, I think that's why I'm kind of rushing through this. And I'm doing a lot of podcasts because I just have a feeling that. And, like, lately, Karen, I didn't tell you this. But, like, like I've been having problems with my liver. And it's an ongoing thing. Like, uh, you oh. know, I, I, it, I, I, it happened, like, three months after the break. Like, I broke up with my ex. Like, and, and then, like. Three months after, like this pain started coming out of nowhere, and then like, uh, you know, I but I've been doing everything. I've been taking supplements to like I, I found a supplement that really helps it, and then I, my friend Priscilla's yeah. been doing like energy healings on me, and and then that was seeming to work, and I was out of pain for three days. And then last night I was in pain at like one in the morning. It came back, oh, and I was dear. like, you know, that the mainstream. I went to mainstream medical. I didn't want to go through mainstream medical, but I mean sometimes you have to. They they did all kinds yeah. of like scans and stuff. They just said I have fatty liver. You know, like which is like oh yeah, you, think that can be, you know. Yeah. You actually, so. you actually want to take care of that, and you know who I would recommend that you check out. I know this is very radical, and I'm not a doctor, and I'm not giving medical advice, but I really recommend you look you look up Dr. Anthony Chafee, and I'm um, trying to think of the other doctor. Um, and basically, you go off everything except meat. For a while you don't have to do it for the rest of your life it's just so that you're not uh so that your liver gets a chance to heal and it's yeah. it's um apparently it's really helping a lot of people so um i would recommend dr anthony chafee i'll send you a link a link to his um to his channel but um yeah i'm sorry to hear that you know and and i i'm i'm super careful because like I'm going to be um, in two months, I'm going to be 69 years old. That's almost 70. I never thought I would live this long. So, my, mom. my mom's 71. So you, you guys are the same, yeah. same, uh, same, uh, same, same yeah. era. Yeah. That was a great so, role, you, guys, you guys came up in the disco era, right? Oh yeah, we sure did. Oh my God. It was very exciting. It was very exciting. It was a whole different uh, everything was very free up until the 1990s. And in the 1990s, everything became about political correctness. And um, all the fun was gone. And before that, like if you went to a, a place to go dancing, there would be the servers would bring you the drinks. They'd all be on roller skates. And oh, my God, there was so much fun you know and uh, and then in the 90s that all started to disappear and uh people just got serious and anxious and uh things have not gone uh, on a very fun way since then i don't know why but anyway i think we should bring the fun back robert i think we need to i agree fun. i agree definitely you know i i yeah honestly and they, yeah how about they, they tried to buy info wars i don't know if anybody saw that like i i yeah, don't watch they did. a lot because like i i'm not like you know like i i feel i love alex jones i, I love what he alex jones stands for you know i think he's great you know 
but like sometimes he gets he's he goes off too i'm like i'm like i don't know he's, he's like i know i know i'm i'm way out there and sometimes he's so far out there he's too much for me like a, you know what i mean sometimes yeah but yeah. but i like him too wouldn't it be funny if they made him the press secretary that would be hilarious. That would be hilarious. That would I I can imagine that. Like he he was he's done a lot to help Trump get elected. I'm mean, Mr. T get elected. I mean he's uh yeah. he's been backing him this whole time, you know. And but I mean like we need people like I mean there should be free press and there should be freedom of speech and we need people like Alex Jones around no matter what he talks about. You know what I mean? I think it's important for him. Right for to him say to it. Do, he, you know? The thing is, is that is that everybody has a right to freedom of speech and their expression and to say how things are for them we don't have to like it we don't have to agree with it but they've got a right to say it just like we have a right to say it and i think that's super super important we've lost free speech in canada did you know that in canada they can decide by using an algorithm which people are likely to commit a hate crime in the future and they don't really define what a hate crime is they can put us in jail for the rest of our life for something we haven't even done that's how bad it's getting in canada so we're really looking forward to a change in government up here too so I mean, I, go ahead is it possible like can they get him out of there well, no, because he changed the laws. And so the laws are that we can't get rid of him. No, he's a yeah. real, pardon me, but he's a dirty bastard and he's got to go. And I mean, my son, how long some of these leaders stay in power? Like, you know, if you look at like Putin, he's like, in, I'm, I'm like kind of indifferent to Putin because, like, you know, I, I don't know. It seems like Trump in, or Mr. T likes him or whatever. But I mean, but, but Trump, but Putin's been in power since the George Bush day, since 2008. It's 2024. That means he's been in power for over 20 years, Putin. It's a long time. In, Can long time. in Canada, it's Justin Trudeau, and he's been in for nine years. And the earliest opportunity for another election is in a year. That will be 10 years. And he's wow. ruined the economy. Anyway, I don't want to get off too much about all this. Um, yeah. I wanted I wanted to tell, oh, Woo Rider says, whoops. Woo, yes, yes, Castro's son Trudeau. Woo Rider's DG says, Caroline uh, Leavitt is Trump's, whoops, Mr. T's new press secretary. She's 27, youngest ever to hold the position. Well, I think we should give young people a chance. Yeah, having all these old fo old fossils, you know, are not, let's face it, you take someone who's like 35 years old and someone who's 75 years old, the 35 year old has way better, is way sharper in their intellect. Like Vivek Ramaswamy, he's really sharp, you know? I mean, they still stay sharp into their fifties, but you know, let's get rid of some of these old fossils and get in some new blood. I agree hundred percent. But anyway, Rob, we're, we're quickly running out of time. I want to turn it back over to you. Is there anything else you want to talk about or you want to share or uh, what are you up to? Where can people find you for those that are new to you? Um, um, I I'm just look for Typical Skeptic Podcast everywhere. I, I can say you I'm mostly, I was on Rockfin, but I haven't been posting on there for a while. Where, where I mostly post is I post on YouTube every day, Rumble almost every day, if not every other day. And then I'm always posting on my audio feed, which is, you know, I'm, you can find me on Spreaker. You know, just type in typical skeptic podcast or typical skeptic podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Um, I what I do, I again I, I put out old episodes that I was doing back in 2020, 2021, 2022. So you get to hear like how I've uh, come along in my awakening journey since then. And a lot of them are really good interviews because, like I said, I have 1600 interviews that I've done. And a, a lot of those are repeats. You know, I, I, I tend to have like if I find someone I really like, I'll have them on over and over again. Like I think you've yeah, been on my too. show five times, you know, like I, I you know, yeah. so there's people that have been on like 10 times. I know Jim Gerard, he's been on like 28 times or something, which is insane. But I mean, um, so yeah, but I I mean, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's where you're, I'm at, you know, and um, I, what I'm doing, I, if you guys want to follow tonight, I have uh, I know tonight I'm doing two live shows at seven o'clock Eastern. I'll have Stephen Bassett from paradigm research group on and uh, Coley UFO. Uh, uh, I met Coley through um, 
uh, through Derek Galloway, who's in the chat, and we became friends. And she's really connected to like the U ufology community. Like she knows like Preston Dennett and Dolly and them as well. So you, 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 I'm sure you'll meet her at some point. And then, um, and then you know Stephen Bassett. He's a uh, he's he's been fighting for disclosure for years. So at seven o'clock, we're going to talk about Eastern. Seven o'clock Eastern, we're going to talk about the uh, the UAP hearing that just happened. And then at nine o'clock Eastern, I have my friend. Nathan Sizek coming on. He's like a military abduction whistleblower. He's a mile high whistleblower. He's going to talk about like the future of disclosure. So that's seven o'clock Eastern and nine o'clock Eastern tonight, only on my YouTube for now. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, um, I want to thank all the people in the live chat. We had a really good turnout today. Uh, I appreciate every, every single one of you. I'm sorry if I didn't get to all of your, um, all of your um, comments, but I displayed quite a few and acknowledged quite a few. And again, uh, thank you, Angel Wings, Jamie, for your channel, uh, for subscribing to the channel membership. I really appreciate that. That's something new that I offer now. And Rob, I'm just so uh, thrilled uh, that we're friends. And I've been on your show just, what, last week? You're on my show this week. We've been on each other's shows numerous times. I think we'll continue to do so. We always have such good discussions. And I just appreciate you very, very much and consider you to be one of my closest friends. And I'm just really grateful. That, yeah, uh, you're, you're, part of you're a really good friend too, Karen. I always love touching base with you. And I, I love the fact, I just want to say can, before we finish up, congratulations on getting your book out. I can't wait. I'll buy it. As soon as it comes out on Amazon, I'll buy it because like, I can't wait to hear about your experiences and I'm just so happy Thank to you. Really put that together and like, you know, that's yeah, a big it is, it is. And thank you so much. So what I'll be doing probably is hit, once it's published and out, I'll be hitting you up to see if I can come on your show and tell everybody about it. So that would be great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So thank you everybody for coming. And for those of you listening on the replay and on audio, mm -hmm. I appreciate you all very, very much. Uh, keep up the good work and we'll see you next week on, um, on aliens and angels. Bye-bye everybody. Thanks everyone. Goodbye. See you tonight. Thank you for joining me for the aliens and angels podcast. Become the change that you wish to see in the world. Subscribe to my YouTube, Rumble, and X channels at Karen Holton TV. Click the like button, leave me a comment, and share this podcast with your friends. Check out my website at www.KarenHoltonHealthCoach.com to see my free resources and amazing products and services. All of the links will be in the description below. As part of the Forbidden Knowledge Network, you will also find the Quantum Guide Show with Karen Holton on all audio platforms. Until next time, keep up the good work.